Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, or good night, and uh, welcome back to the Superior Comic Show as we continue our new video series, Marvel Villains. We just finished up on Mephisto, which anyone who's watching WandaVision or is interested in the demonic side of Marvel Villains should go check out. Um, I'm sure I'll have a card floating around the top of the screen somewhere there now. But today we're talking about a regular X-Men villain known as Carl Lycos, or many of you will know him as Sauron. Yes, he did call himself after the Lord of the Rings villain. Huge nerd, but... Hey, that's it. So, as you can see there, doesn't exactly look like a dude in my background image. But uh, Carl Lycos, I'll get into his bio and his history and his origin now, but is also a giant pterodactyl. How? Look. I wish I could get uh, Jeff Goldblum in to say this line, but Lycos finds a way. I'll let myself out. So let's get on to Lycos's origin. I could be Lycos, so I could be butchering that completely, but it's, I said a cookie crumbles. So Carl was the son of an adventurer. And then this one time they were in an expedition when he was just a kid, they traveled to Tierra del Fuego uh, near the Antarctic Circle. Um, during that trip, Carl and his friend were attacked by giant pterodons who had migrated there from the Savage Land. Now, any X-Men fans will know the Savage Land well, but yeah, basically it's a place where prehistoric animals are still kicking. And um, remind me a bit of this show. Yeah. And so during this attack, he was bitten by them and he survived, but their, their bites altered his genetic structure. And he became sort of an energy vampire and started needing to drain the life force out of other living beings to survive. Um, he kept his power a secret for a while, but, you know, he still needed to use it to live. That's, it's like me, an asthmatic, hiding the fact that I need my inhaler, although I think taking a couple of pulses from an inhaler is a bit different to sucking the life force out of someone. Yeah. Um, well, he went to live with um, his friend and he wanted to marry her, but her father wouldn't let him because of his lack of financial stability. So he went off and became a doctor and a hypnotherapist. And during this time, he created a device that would transfer his patient's life force to himself. And at the beginning, shitty situation, but the dude didn't kill. He just drained enough life force that would keep him alive while making his victims feel temporarily weakened. Um, well, as time goes on, um, there was a battle between the X Men and the Sentinels. He had a connection with Professor X, and Havoc nearly killed himself when he unleashed his full powers and buried himself in a lower rubble. And the X Men brought him to Lycos, knowing that of his connection with Professor X, and thinking that he could be the only doctor they could trust because Havoc was a mutant, and being a mutant is bad, apparently. And I'd love to be a mutant. Different conversation for a different day, Peter. Um, but yeah, Lycos um, used his device to drain some of Havoc's life force and himself to keep himself alive. But because it was energy, energy because it was mutant's energy and mutant's life force, it triggered, almost triggered Carl's mutation and turned him into a half pterodon, half human hybrid, um, almost like Kirk Connors, um, but in a more weird vampire kind of way. Um, but he still retained his intelligence. Uh, but his personality changed and he became a bit of a dick or evil, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then he named himself after the Lord of the Rings villain, Sauron, and went on an absolute rampage which forced the X-Men to fight him. Uh, this didn't, mutation didn't last forever. Lycos kind of went back and forth. He would only really transform into Sauron in, when he drained the life force of mutants or other altered beings. Um, eventually, he made his way to the Savage Land, where he stayed there and became more and more animalistic. Um, and 
currently in the comics, I believe. He is in the hands of the Weapon X program, and then he's one of their agents. Um, but now he mainly seeks out mutants to drain life force from so he can get himself stronger and become a stronger pterodactyl, stronger flying lizard man. Yeah. That's um, who Karlaikos or Sauron is. But he also has some, a couple of other powers that you see come into play during comics, in the comics. When he absorbs a power from mutants, he'll actually absorb a portion of their powers temporarily. And then due to manipulation by the Weapon X program, he can actually shoot life force energy in concussive bursts from his hands. And so yeah, use the force, Carl. Yeah, obviously as a pterodactyl, um, he's superhuman strong, he can fly. At, you know, the regular limits of pterodactyl would be able to fly at because everybody knows that. Um, then clearly in battle, he has his beak and his sharp talons on his hands and feet, and then he has these concussive blasts now. He also has an amplified hypnotic ability. I guess that kind of was part of his mutation because he was a hypnotherapist. Um, but it's only when he's in pterodactyl form. Um, and if he makes direct eye contact, um, he can give his victims delusions that people around him and their allies are becoming monsters, which is a crazy-ass power to have. So yeah, that is Sauron, um, how he can't be and who he is. Next, I'm going to take a look at some of my favourite Sauron moments and key issues I think you should pick up if you want to know who Sauron is. So the first key issue I'd say with any character would be his debut. Um, so Sauron was created by Roy Thomas and Neil Adams and made his debut in X-Men number 59, which came out in August 1969. There is um, X-Force in uh, first volume number five, where Toad and Blob track down Sauron and basically forced him to absorb his lover's life force, killing her. And he doesn't choose a mutant because it turned him into Sauron and then he would join the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And I continue reading on in that series because it was a great little series. Of course, you'd have to look into the Weapon X series with Malcolm Colcord, who basically took Sauron prisoner into the Weapon X program. It would be interesting to see if you're looking to know more about the character's history and so forth. But finally, I'm going to leave it all off. And I'm going to four or five from Mephisto. What is that? Truth is, even with research, I know more about Mephisto than Sauron. Um, it was easier to locate the exact numbers and titles for Mephisto. And I do not want to steer anyone wrong. But this next one will make up for that. It is possibly the most memeable Sauron moment ever. Um, and it involves a storyline where him and Stegron kidnap the X-Men, including Spider-Man, who was a teacher there at the time, and bring them to the Savage Land to turn them into dinosaurs. He has a machine to turn them into dinosaurs. From in Spider-Man and the X-Men number two by Elliot Kalan um, and Marco uh, Thayla, it could, it could be Faya, it could be pronounced completely wrong, uh, Clayton Cowles and Ian Harry. So Sauron then reveals his evil plan. I'm going to put a panel up here because this needs to be seen to be believed. Um, and I'm, I'm reading it out. With the DNA we liberated from the grave desecration you call a museum, I have perfected the Sauronization process. You rice paper puppets will be given forms befitting Earth's dominant species, to which our favourite web slinger retorts, you can re rewrite DNA on the fly. And you're using it to turn people into dinosaurs. But with that, with tech like that, you could cure cancer. And then probably my favorite line I think I've seen in a comic ever, and I've seen, heard seen Spider-Man say, bye Felicia, and ye. Sauron replies, I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. And that right there cemented him as a character I had to look more into for this series and for myself because that is incredible. That is a villain basically admitting he's not doing this for because he thinks it's the right thing to do in his head. He's doing this because he wants to. And I like that. I like a villain that's just a villain. 
He's turning people into dinosaurs because he wants to. You cure cancer with that tech? I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. You got to respect it. Not the not curing cancer part, the just knowing what he wants and not being afraid to admit it. Fair play to do it. So yeah, that is uh, Marvel's Sauron, who I'd love to see in live action. If we can get Kirk Connors turned into the lizard in live action, I'm sure we can get some dude turned into a giant pterodactyl named after a Lord of the Rings villain. Yeah. Like it's like three different types of nerds uniting. Comic nerds, Lord of the Ring nerds, dino nerds. It's perfect. Uh, so I would love to see Sauron in live action eventually. Who knows? Will we get it? Maybe. Um, I won't put anything past Feige. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, um, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Did I miss anything out while uh, talking about Sauron? Is this all new information to you? And what villains would you like to see me do in the future? Um, next up in the series, we have Craven and Fin Fang Foom, which will be interesting to do. But after that, it's an open slate. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you can find out. Thanks for watching. And I want to turn people into dinosaurs. <laughs>